process of generating executable code from a high-level language program, which we commonly refer to just as compiling, actually involves several steps. A better understanding of assembly and linking help us design and build better embedded programs. Compilation turns a high-level language program into assembly code. The assembler turns an assembly language program into object code. The linker combines several object files into an executable. And the loader loads that executable program into memory. Understanding the role of these different steps helps us design better programs. In particular, we may need to manipulate this process to design embedded systems that require certain things to be at certain locations in memory. We're going to concentrate today on assembly and linking. Remember that we often want to assemble a program out of several different modules of code. So we need to have a way to turn generic addresses for memory locations into more and more specific addresses. A relative address is measured a relative address is measured relative to the start of a code module. So for instance, the address for the first location of the module might be 0. An absolute address is in the memory space itself, so it's measured relative to the start of the memory space. Assemblers perform several important tasks. They generate binary code for symbolic instructions, they translate labels into ad addresses, and they also handle pseudo-ops, that is, statements that do not directly generate code. Although pseudo-ops do do some important steps for us, generally speaking, assembly is a one-to-one -one translation. In contrast, high-level language compilation can generate many instructions from a single state. So on the right-hand side, we have a simple example of assembly code. Uh, we have an ADR instruction from ARM, which is used to load a location into a register. This operation is given a label so that we can refer to that location. The org statement at the top stands for origin. This is a traditional way we can specify an address in an assembly language program. So this would specify an address of 100. In order to turn labels into addresses, we need to create a symbol table. On the left-hand side, we have assembly code with two different labels. The XX label goes into the symbol table with one value for its location. The YY label goes into the symbol table with its own value for its location. So now when we refer to these labels in assembly code, we can substitute in that value. Now in general, in order to be able to use labels in an arbitrary way, we need to make two passes over the assembly code. The first pass creates the symbol table but doesn't generate any code itself. The second step actually uses the symbol table in order to create the code. If we're creating debuggable code, we often want to include the symbol table. That allows us to refer to addresses in memory with the labels that we've used in the program. Otherwise, we would have to type in a numeric address directly. When we generate the symbol table, we use a program location counter, or PLC, to keep track of the address at each given location in the assembly language code. We scan the assembly language program, keeping count of the PLC. Remember that these addresses are generated at assembly time, not at execution time. So the program location counter is not a program counter. It doesn't change with execution. It's simply a bookkeeping tool for figuring out the address of a label. Here's a simple example. We have some assembly code with two labels, XX and YY. Here's the PLC starting at location 7. We'll assign 8 to the next, we'll assign 8 to the next statement in the program. And that means that XX has a value of 8. We then go to the next statement, which is located at 9. We then go to the next statement, which is located at 10, which gives us the value of the label for YY. Remember that we want to build a program out of more than one module. So we don't always have the addresses when we're assembling a given piece of code. That means we need to use relative addresses. Remember that we may be assembling our program out of several modules. So we may not have all the labels and their values when we're assembling a given piece of code. 
So we need to use relative addresses to talk about the labels until such time as we know all of the modules and all of their labels. We need to keep track of external labels. Remember, we can't generate full binary for an instruction that uses an external label. So we need to generate an intermediate binary form that remembers that certain values are in fact relative addresses and not absolute addresses. We can patch in the absolute addresses later. Pseudo operations, remember, don't directly generate code. So the org or origin statement, as we saw, says the program location counter. The EQU statement, or equate, generates a symbol table entry without advancing the PLC. We also have data statements that define blocks of data and perhaps initialize those blocks, but they don't generate instructions. Linking is the step that takes several object modules and combines them into a single execution. It has to put the modules in particular order and location in memory and it also has to resolve those labels that refer between different modules. Here's an example. We have two modules here. The left-hand module has two labels that it creates. These are called entry points, XXX and YYY. The right-hand piece of code has one entry point, A. So we can see that A is referred to in the left-hand module over here. That's known as an external reference. So now we can replace this reference to this label with the entry point location. We can do the same, for example, for YYY in the right-hand code. In this case, XXX isn't referred to in the right-hand code, but it may be referred to by some other module. The linker also determines where modules are placed in memory. In some cases, we don't care very much exactly where a module goes. In other cases, we care a great deal. For example, we saw that interrupt vector tables need to go at a particular location in memory. Machines with relative addressing also may put restrictions on how far a given instruction can address away from its own location. So we may have constraints on the relative location of different pieces of code. The linker determines the placement of modules in memory. It also refers to a load map or perhaps some linker flags to get additional guidance from the programmer. The load map specifies where certain modules can go. So, for example, we can use the load map to tell the linker where to put our interrupt vector table in memory. Some operating systems allow us to link when we start the program, not before. This allows the operating system to share one copy of library code among many different programs. Each program, of course, has its own data, but if it's a commonly used library, we can use the dynamic linking to share at least the code. It also allows programs to be updated with new versions of libraries without going through the entire linking process. In Windows, these dynamically linked files are known as DLLs. One more issue related to linking is reentrancy. A reentrant piece of code can be called multiple times and get the same result each time. Non-reentrancy is often caused by global variables. For instance, this code here has a global variable foo. Each time the function task1 is called, it updates and changes the value of foo. So each time we call it, we get a different value. So the linker will initialize that location to 1 when the program starts, but task1 keeps updating it. If we rely on the linker to initialize the value, but in fact is changed, we may cause unusual problems in the execution of a code that would be hard to debug. In summary, the assembler turns textual descriptions of instructions and data into binary form. Labels can be used to generate symbolic locations. In summary, assemblers turn textual descriptions of instructions and data into binary form. Labels can be used to symbolically refer to locations in memory. Linkers resolve label values between program units in order to create an executable binary.